Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task and continuing still with 4.1 that is planning. This is the part three of this. And in today's tutorial, we'll be talking about communicating about performance testing. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be understanding that what kind of communication with the stakeholders uh, happens from the performance testing point of view and how exactly these communication can be including uh, different informations to be shared from a different perspective because the communication can happen to the stakeholders with a business focus, which comes from the business point of view, and the other one is from the technical point of view. We who are going to assist you with improvising your uh, technical aspects in order to meet the performance parameters or performance goals. So communicating the information as the outcome of the performance test are slightly different when you put it to a technical person and when you put it to a person representing the business. So that's what we will be trying to understand that how to set up these criteria right at the planning phase that how we will be passing on the relevant information to the respective parties. So here the tester must be capable of communicating to all the stakeholders the rationale behind the performance testing approach and the activities to be undertaken as detailed in the performance test plan. The subjects to be addressed in this communication may vary considerably between the stakeholders depending on whether they have a business or user facing interest or a more technology or operation facing focus. Now, of course, we'll be just elaborating the both of them that how exactly does it make a difference when we communicate the performance outcomes to a business facing person or stakeholders and how does it vary to the technical facing uh, stakeholders. So starting with the stakeholders with business focus, the following factors should be considered when communicating with stakeholders with a business focus. For example, stakeholders with a business focus are less interested in the distinction between the functional and non-functional quality characteristics. They are more driven towards that what's the outcome of it. Is that going to meet our expectations or not? So they're more of a like, you know, goal-driven people and goal-driven stakeholders. So we generally don't really make them understand that how this is going to impact the functionality uh, or how the functional parameters can impact the non-functionality. They just expect that thing to happen. And if you can really do that, you just try to showcase them in the terms of like how this exactly is going to uh, fit the purpose. Technical issues concerning tooling, scripting, uh, load generation are generally of secondary interest. Again, the business uh, focus team does not really care that how do you manage it, how do you going to run it, how do you going to test it, and all sort of these things will not be their area of interest and they don't really want to know that how will you be doing it. It's just that what you have done and will you be able to achieve it or not. The connection between product risk and performance test objectives may be clearly stated to them because risk is something which should be brought into the notice of the customer and uh, performance uh, test objectives which are going to be dependent on that and how we are going to fulfill those things will be something which is common and important for the business facing stakeholders. Stakeholders must be made aware of the balance between the cost of planned performance test and how representative the performance testing results will be uh, compared to the production condition. So again this point speaks it for itself that uh, the cost of planned performance tests as a budget to be explained to them and how representative the performance testing result will be like the way you will be putting it to them in terms of the graphical representations or outcome driven approaches in a PPT format which showcases the overall trend of the performance outcomes. The repeatability of the planned performance test must be communicated that how often and how many times we need to read on those scenarios to validate it because not every time a repetition is involved. But again, looking from a different aspect, when you have a performance degrade involved, you may have repetitions involved there as well. Project risk must be communicated. So not just the product risk. We also talk about the project risk here. Uh, this includes the constraints and dependency concerning the setup of the test, infrastructure requirements, and any dependencies on the key staff, which is like the team members who will be doing that, how many of them will be a part of your project, anyone joining in, anyone leaving in, 
living out. So you just have to declare them any of those uh, project risks which you may experience on the way so that the client can be equally aware of it that, okay, you informed us that these things may happen and how you're overcoming those uh, risks which you have defined as a part of the project. Also, the high-level activities must be communicated together with a broad plan containing cost, time schedule, and milestones. So here you definitely determine that how you will be trying to achieve that performance goals, what will be your approach altogether, what will be the core level activities being performed, like you may be running load tests, you may be running stress testing, you may be running you know, volume soak and so on. So you just want to make sure that uh, you give a high level overview of what will be the, your approach in terms of activities uh, which you'll be performing, what the definitely the details of the cost involved in it, the time which you will be taking to do that, and uh, the milestones at what point you will be representing back to them the outcomes of it. On the other hand, of course, we do have stakeholders uh, from the techno techni technology focus, that is technical point of view, and to them, we definitely showcase a different uh, picture of the performance and they can not really understand. So a business uh, stakeholder don't really get into the deeper dive because they may not come from a technical background. But when it comes to a technical team, we don't talk about presenting some silly graphs to them, rather give them a technical detail at the ground level that what exactly is going on. So the following factors must be considered when communicating with stakeholders with a technology focus. The planned approach to generating required load profiles must be explained and the expected involvement of the technical stakeholders made clear that what kind of you know involvement the technical stakeholders will have and how are you planning to generate the load because the load generators does matter and will they be capable enough to generate the sufficient load which we may need to test the application. So you may definitely you know share these informations with the technical stakeholders. Detailed steps in the setup of and execution of the performance test must be explained to show the relationship or relations of the testing to the architectural risk. That means, of course, each scenario which you're talking about creating in terms of like different processes or transactions must be definitely shared with them to understand that how are you going to set it up? Is your script meeting the expectations or not? Maybe if you are getting diverted for some reason, then they may contribute in terms of determining that how your process should be and what kind of steps and execution of the performance test should be aligned. So maybe you can definitely consider these things and come up with a prioritization of execution schedule and define the overall you know execution schedule to uh, run those tests uh, as a part of the performance scenario. Steps required to make performance tests repeatable must be communicated. Uh, these may include organizational aspects as well as the technical issues. The reason why you would repeat a particular test must be informed to them or kept updated that these are the common reasons or these are the typical reasons related to the architectural issues or technical issues which may bring us to do that again and again or probably repeat certain scenarios over time just to make sure that due to this change or technical risk involved we are trying to make sure that these tests are still working fine or does not impact any part of it. Where test environments are to be shared the scheduling of performance test must be communicated to the ensure to ensure the test result will not be adversely impacted so whenever uh, the test environment comes into picture scheduling of a performance test must be communicated to them that this is where we will be running the test or probably in the environment where you might be looking into so uh, the results may not be really impacted by that because these environments are something which is very closer or descaled down to some ratios and uh, we really have to be taking care of those results and outcome and we don't have to over rely on those outcomes because they have to be further scaled up to see that how this will meet the expectation and the end goal of performance testing. Mitigation of the potential impact on actual users if performance testing needs to be executed in the production environment must be communicated and accepted because there are certain things which you cannot do in the virtual environment. So whenever you try to run such things in the production environment, you need to take necessary approvals from the customer that we will be trying to apply a big load on this real-time environment. So make sure that you are aware of it. And if anything goes wrong, you should not wonder that what exactly happened. So we'll be keeping a track of everything, what happens and how this basically comes up as a outcome of performance testing. 
Technical stakeholders must be clear about their task and when they are scheduled because you definitely may have their contributions from time to time in the entire performance testing lifecycle. So you must keep them updated with the schedule that at what point uh, the contribution uh, of the technical stakeholders are required uh, at throughout the life cycle, the schedule, and at the same time, what kind of involvement we are expecting from them so that they can be readily available with all necessary information, what they may provide you and be prepared for it. So you just keep them informed at different point of time or in the beginning in the planning itself that at these points we would need the interaction of the you know technical stakeholders and their contribution will be X, Y, Z whatsoever. So you just define that in the beginning itself. Well, putting it all together, that was all to talk about the test planning of the performance test. Just, you know, you know there are a lot of things to be remembered from here. And of course, being aware of the planning stage can give you a lot of uh, you know, inference that how exactly things will happen at the ground level. Of course, we do have a lot of other phases to come up, so stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.